What is happening y'all, Cowboy here. In today's video, I wanted to take a look at the full skill tree for AC Valhalla, uh, talk about what skills I would recommend and have a big focus around looking at each of these main talent points that we can work towards since those are the biggest factors in each tree. So we're gonna be starting off going through the warrior tree. I found that to be my preferred play style, but I have had a chance to test out all the various talents. I don't think they're actually called talents, but that's what I'm naming them because they're just like bigger nodes on the skill tree. Uh, so either way, going on up first up, we have is Stomp. Now Stomp is all in all an excellent skill. Uh, there are quite a few unique weapon attacks that can forcefully knock enemies down. For example, if you have a one-handed hammer in your offhand and you hold the left bumper, you just smash an enemy on the ground and get a free Stomp. Uh, the damage on Stomp isn't quite as high as a stun attack execution, but it is very considerable. I'd, I'd put it at roughly like two heavy attacks worth of damage, so pretty potent. Uh, moving on from Stomp, to the left we have Dual Swap, which allows you to change which hand is holding which weapon. Honestly, I found this a little too situational for my tastes. Um, different, depending on the weapon you have in your offhand, it'll dictate your special attack by holding the left bumper. So using the image there as an example, <clears throat> with a hammer in your left hand, you'll be able to dash and slam and then do multiple hits with the hammer uh, and then do a stomp. If you had an ax in your left hand, you'll do a multi-hit combo where you just continually swing. Um, and while it does give you a little bit more combat flexibility, ultimately I find that some weapons are just straight superior to others in the offhand. And so ultimately I didn't find dual swap that useful, but it is something I could see some players enjoying based on their personal playstyle. Perfect attack on the other hand, this is just a straight upgrade. Um, heavier weapons it's going to work best with, but this can work with lighter weapons as well, as long as you time your attacks. Just, you know, there's no reason not to pick this up. And over here we have parry damage. Uh, if you're the type of person that spams parries as much as I do, uh, this one's a no-brainer. I mean, it's it's literally just free damage on a parry. It's going to help you get you stuns faster. Really can't go wrong with this one. Uh, branching on out into the higher tiers, we have Adrenaline Fiend over here. Uh, this one's pretty nice. Basically, as long as you have at least one Adrenaline slot filled, you just get a damage and attack speed boost. So, um, definitely a solid all-around skill. You know, you're building up Adrenaline pretty fast in combat, so you can't really go wrong with that one. Uh, moving over here to the other tier twos, we have light bow combo, which allows you to just deal uh, higher culminating damage with a light bow. A lot of the light bow skills are in the warrior tree, hunter bow skills are over in the ranged tree, and predator bow stuff is in the stealth tree. Uh, there's actually two different light bow techniques. I found this one to be the preferable choice. Over here, we actually have two talents. We have a uh, adrenaline upgrade and then berserker's metal. Uh, berserker's metal basically lets you take a single pop shot without losing your adrenaline bar. So if you're going for a warrior playstyle, absolute necessity having this skill, uh, just you know, allowing you to uh, obviously maintain your adrenaline and it obviously has the synergy over here with Adrenaline Fiend, you know, making sure you maintain that one bar to keep that buff up. Uh, so jumping out into the outer tiers over here, <clears throat> we have Heavy Dual Wield. Now this one is actually kind of a game changer uh, on top of being able to dual wield giant axes or great swords like it's Dark Souls 2 PvP all over again. Uh, in my opinion, the biggest thing that makes this uh, a very attractive skill is just one handing a single two handed weapon. Uh, one of the things I found to be incredibly potent was using a great sword in my main hand and then a one handed hammer in my off hand uh, and being able to have mix ups like that is actually really nice because it's just going to you know um, just increase your weapon diversity even more you know deciding what weapon you want to take advantage of now I can take advantage of the hammer slam while still having the follow-up of a great axe or uh, a great sword definitely a very very nice skill to work towards uh, moving up here terror is a crowd control option personally I didn't find this to be that useful um, stun finishers are fairly common uh, the enemies cowering in fear is pretty frequent, but the thing is it's only weaker enemies. It's the enemies that you would kill in like a single combo anyway, or a single ability. So having them CC'd, I didn't find to be really that useful. They're basically just adrenaline fodder. Uh, over here we have Battlefield Cremation. Now this is one of the most situational yet powerful skills in the game. Uh, if you can do consistent fire damage, like you have, you have a weapon that say is you know, on heavy attack, ignites enemy, 
uh, battlefield cremation is disgustingly powerful but you absolutely need to have a condition that you can force ignite you don't want uh, to just run this with something that does a little bit of fire damage like say the the bow explosion you want something that you're going to consistently ignite the enemy if you have that this ability is just ridiculous uh, moving over here warrior takedown i love this ability uh, basically you just walk up and do a heavy attack instead of doing an assassination and if you kill the enemy it instantly fills your adrenaline bars super op uh, sprint bash i found completely useless uh, the best use for this was actually sprinting through and breaking mining clusters to get iron it just didn't feel that good i mean we can we can bash things with our weapons so i don't i don't know i didn't see value in this maybe somebody can see it out there i didn't see it myself uh, over here we have the other light bow and that is arrow volley this basically lets you charge up all of your arrows and loose them kind of like a shotgun blast uh the light bow in particular you have like five arrows at once and you can rapid fire them or with arrow volley you'll just load them all out and shoot them so it, you'll burn through your arrows very quickly with this but you do a lot of damage so that's the trade-off you know you're hitting for all five of your arrows at the same time so it's something to think about um, now the rest of the stuff over here is going to be stuff for the ranger tree so before we jump into that we're going to start back from the base here and then work our way around so the first skill in the ranger tree stealth recon uh kind of an interesting choice i mean personally i feel like that that makes more sense in the assassin tree but whatever here we go uh, obviously highlighting enemies is great if you're having a big emphasis on the range style just so you know you know who who is visible in your line of sight that you can hit who isn't um all in all just a, a pretty solid ability probably one that's worth picking up regardless of what play style you go for uh, going into our tier ones we have sprint attack which is just a pretty standard one that you will want to work towards um i'm actually going to be working my way over to that soon but there's some things down below that i want to get first uh, over here bow to melee link this one is a little bit more situational basically as long as you're alternating between them uh, you get a bonus damage it's like a stacking buff similar to the buffs we see in our weapons um I found it to be nice, but at the same time, I didn't think it was worth investing that far this early. It is something that I would invest over towards as a warrior a little bit later, but there's uh, other key skills that I would consider a priority first. Uh, emergency aim. This one, I'm not a giant fan of with the light bow. Uh, with ranger bows or predator bows, I could definitely see the value in a skill like this, but using a light bow in particular, um, you know the the snap i'm not usually going to get enough power to one hit kill something in the head with a light bow anyway so this skill loses value for me but with a ranger bow this is definitely worth it and even more so with a predator bow because of how potent those are uh, over here hunter bow combo if you're running a emphasis on the range tree and working with a hunter bow this one is a no-brainer it just lets you build up uh, damage with your hunter bow but obviously keep in mind this is only for the hunter bow uh, if you're running predator or light this bonus does not apply uh, moving on over to here arrow reinforcement i would consider this to be one of your most important skills if you're playing as an archer uh, just making sure that your arrows don't break and you can collect them that just keeps you in the fight even longer definitely a very solid pickup choice all right that moving over here uh stealth adrenaline personally i didn't find this to be all that useful um I mean, in theory, I get why it works. You know, you're, you're getting adrenaline from, from hitting a chest or pickpocketing. But the thing is, adrenaline comes in so fast just from assassinating. Like, you assassinate somebody and you get, like, half a bar already. So I felt like this actually kind of slowed down the gameplay for me. If you want a super stealthy, sneaky playstyle, I can see more value in it. But uh, as somebody who was typically, like, go, 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 I felt that this slowed down things uh, more than I would have preferred. Bow Stun Finisher. Now, this is definitely one of the flashier skills in the game. Uh, if you have an emphasis with the bow, this is really cool. It's basically stomp, but for bow. Now, the idea is when the enemy gets stunned, you just do this this spin around and hit them. And it's, I mean, God, look, it's like, it's like a Legolas spin. It's flashy as hell. It finishes people off. If you're doing a bow focus play, I'd definitely pick this one up. It's a lot of fun. So moving on over here. Uh, battleground bolt is one that i am working my way towards this is definitely a pretty fun skill uh, the damage you do is going to vary a lot 
Um, I mean, in the cutscene, you know, you see the guy getting instantly one shot, and there are going to be opportunities like that, but it's not 100% of the time. You can't just yeet javelins into everything you see since it's based on what's on the ground. Uh, but it is a really fun skill, and it flows into combat uh, pretty much seamlessly, so definitely an interesting one to, to pick up if you're working your way down that tree. Uh, over here, charge shot. Fire two fully charged arrows. Once again, another skill that's exclusive to the hunter bow, just allowing you to get an even more damage. Um, not a bad choice, and I don't know if I was doing something wrong, but in testing at least, I found issues uh, using charge shot alongside uh, arrow bow combo. I don't know what it was. Like the, the I think it's because like one is a charge and one is a draw and release. Um, so to, to be honest, I, I, I don't know. Um, I think part of this is going to come up to to the preference. Uh, charge shot obviously gives you the chance of double damage, but it is a very high stamina cost. Personally, I think I would take the other one um, we had over here, uh, the the hunter bow combo, just allowing you to to fire these off a little bit faster. But very much going to be user preference in this case. Uh, moving down here, grit. This is kind of a weird skill to even see in this tree. This is one of the ones I'm working my way towards. Uh, basically, you just recover the portion of red health that you lost. Think, you know, Bloodborne and getting back your health. I don't know why it is all the way over here in the uh, in the Hunter Tree, but uh, definitely one to work towards for melee and obviously good uh, pretty much regardless of what your playstyle is going to be. Covered that. Covered Sprint. Okay. Uh, last Chance Healing is basically just like a cheat death when your health gets low. You know, you're able to, to slow time, get out, heal, whatever the case is. Personally, I didn't find this to be that useful. I feel that um, anytime I'm in a situation like that, I'm already like, you know, as long as you're aware of your surroundings, I don't feel that you really need a last chance. But I suppose on uh, if you're playing on very hard, it could be a little bit more helpful just to avoid those one shots. Uh, over here, just straight adrenaline slot. And uh, with that, I think we are ready to work into the assassin tree. So we get you we did okay uh so first up backstab uh this one's pretty much a no-brainer uh obviously it's just more damage from behind whether you're using the bow whether you're using melee uh just a, a solid skill all around to to get in some extra damage on the enemy one that i do plan on picking up myself uh, moving on to our tier twos brush with death this is the slow time on the last minute dodge uh pretty nice one but honestly i wasn't a fan of the the slow time um i like the slow time on a couple abilities but i had this going off a lot in combat and i felt like i mean in odyssey it made sense because i was a god but here i i don't know personally i really enjoy the fast paceness i don't think that's a word of combat that we have in this game like there's just a vigor to the combat and this is the opposite of that this you know it slows things down i get the the appeal of it but personally i didn't feel that it, it fit with my viking smash and dash play style uh moving over to here guided arrow we're all familiar with the skill if you're using a predator bow this lets you just do goofy ass snipes it's fun but obviously unique to only the predator bow advanced assassination this allows you to kill the higher level targets with a perfect assassination uh, if you're doing an assassination style playthrough, I could certainly understand the appeal of this. Um, personally, I'm not, so I just wasn't really a fan. I'd rather just fight these guys and beat them with an axe. Uh, to be fair, a lot of this stuff is kind of irrelevant to me because I have access to warrior takedown. Um, moving on down, though, breakfall. Now, this is why my this is why I have points in the assassin tree right now, working my way on down. Um, breakfall is amazing. It, it it's not as op as the godfall from odyssey but it reduces damage a lot like as long as you're not jumping off the peak of a mountain uh this is going to prevent any fall related deaths so definitely a solid choice to work down towards uh let's just hop down we already covered adrenaline uh missile reversal this one is really interesting but also very situational uh, personally, I found myself enjoying the uh, the battle ramble a lot more just because I was finding stuff on the ground a lot. Uh, I will say that in some of the later zones, we start to see more enemies that like to throw things at you, whether it's javelins 
or uh, the people that are like slinging rocks at you or whatever. And it does come into play there and it is really satisfying to get off. But just keep in mind that it is situational and not every enemy is going to be using missiles that you can reverse. Moving on over, auto loot is another one that I'm working towards. This is, you know, it's a no brainer. Uh, I think that I wish this wasn't so far into the tree because I was looking for this earlier. And uh, it's one of those things that I just like picking up. You don't need to worry about looting. Uh, especially useful because like a lot of enemies now, uh, the enemy may have supplies on them. And I want those supplies when I kill them. Uh, moving over to here, chain assassination. If you're playing an assassin style, this one's a no brainer. Pick it up, get those chain kills. Adrenaline slot upgrade, also kind of a no-brainer there. Assassin's Cantrip. Now, this one's pretty interesting. Basically, you get a parry, and then you can just smoke bomb to get out of combat. Um, I wasn't a giant fan of it. I understand the appeal of it. If we were able to get a uh, free instant kill assassinations in the smoke bomb, like, you know, Ghost of Tsushima style, I think it would have been uh, more interesting, but it's more of like a stun in this game and ultimately i feel that that kind of i feel like it lost potential uh because of that you know i wasn't able to like i want to smoke bomb and then just like shank 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 like with, that's which what we used to do in the old assassin creed games but yeah not here which is kind of weird um over here we have miasma if you're playing a toxic based build very similar to the incendiary in the fire tree this has obvious value but you need to make sure that you have a emphasis on poison to get your your value out of this skill uh, explosive corpse this one is super situational but one of the funniest skills in this game just because you kill one guy and you're literally like putting a bomb on the body which leads to as you can see some pretty hilarious results um not very useful in combat but definitely a fun one if you're just like messing around and free roaming this is the skill that's going to make you chuckle like an idiot um uh, moving over we do brush with death uh, predator bow combo pretty straightforward bonus damage to headshots honestly it's, I don't know the predator bow skills just aren't appealing to me this time around I think I've just I've grown out of it uh, and then counter roll which is another one that I'd like to pick up this basically lets you do a um, the attacks that are unparryable you get dodge you can dodge and put yourself right behind the enemy uh, so that covers all of the primary talents and the skills uh, beyond that, each each skill thing, you know, a lot of these are just going to be basic things for the tree. Ability damage, melee crit chance, range damage, stealth, melee resistance. Uh, these are, are almost universal. One of the only things that's really going to be different is we're going to see Way of the Raven stuff over here. And we're going to see Way of the uh, Way of the Bear stuff is going to be over in this tree. And then, of course, Way of the Wolf is going to be over in this tree. Um, personally, I'm finding the warrior playstyle to be super enjoyable. Uh, just from what I have right here, my plan next is uh, I want to be picking up Breakfall next for the obvious advantages of that. And then I will go Missile Reversal over to Auto Loot. And then after Auto Loot, look into uh, getting Backstab as well as Counter Roll. And then lastly, I'll work my way all the way over to pick up Grit is one of the final things I get. Uh, but keep in mind, I'm really early in the game. Uh, it's pretty easy to get your power up to... You know, I've heard around 150, 200, uh, and with 62 power, you can see I've picked up, what is this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different talents just in the one tree alone. So, as you can imagine, uh, you know, leveling up to the higher levels, you have quite a few skill points to divvy around and spend however you'd like. But either way, hopefully this video gives you guys a chance to, you know, kind of plan out where you want to go with your skills, um... I know even though everyone can take a look at this since we are able to freely respec, keep that in mind, um, you know, early on you don't have a lot of skill points, so you might not know which direction you want to take your tree, and you might just be curious to see what things have. So either way, thanks for stopping on by. Hopefully this helps a couple of y'all, and I'll catch you guys later.